Let's use a working file that I've called query2. Again, it's a blank file, so you could create your own. And we're going to connect to the access database that we have in your working folder. So data, new query from database, from Microsoft Access database, employees. Navigator will then load. I want the employees table. And then let's edit. Our steps now are to explore the query editor a little bit more detail. When you start, your data is loaded into this central pane. If there is a lot of data, it only loads a sample of the data. Now, down the left here in the status bar, you'll see what you've got, which is 20 columns and 99 rows. If you had hundreds of thousands of rows, it would only load 1,000 of them. On the home ribbon of your query editor, because effectively here you've got a little mini program of its own, you can see we have quite a few choices. Now, one of those has been done for us. Use first row as headers. So if your data comes into here and you find it hasn't taken the first row as a set of headers, then you can turn that on from here. If it does take it and it shouldn't, then we can take that out. So use headers as first row or use first row as headers. On the applied steps section here, this is effectively is the history of everything that you've done inside the query editor and is your steps that you can go backwards from. So you can see we've chosen the source. We've gone in through the navigation and chosen the data table that we want. And then we've promoted the headers. Now that's occurred because we've actually made a change and you can see it's taken my first person as the headers. Well, that's wrong. Use headers as the first row. Use first row as headers. My steps have all gone wrong here, but that's where the applied steps come in. I can go backwards through the steps until I'm at a stage that I'm happy. So I can go all the way back to navigation and you can see the titles then come in. Now I can go forward. So it's a bit like undo and redo. And you can see the steps then get reapplied. But really, I don't want any of these steps. So I can right click and there is an option delete until end, which will be everything from that point forward. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes, I am. And then we're back to where we came in, which is after the navigation stage, the data has been chosen. On the home ribbon of our query editor, we have the close button that we've seen, the close and load that loads the data into our Excel workbook. Refresh the preview. So that's this view here. If you're dealing with pretty live data that is changing all the time, that's a really great option. In our case, the data is not changing all the time because it's on the same machine. We then have properties, which is a simple dialog box allowing you to add a description. And then we have an advanced editor, which we don't do anything with. But I'm just going to show you. This is the code that is used by the query editor. And if you really wanted to, you could look up how you could write this yourself. And you can actually write the advanced editor code here that will do all the steps we're going to do with the menu items. So let's cancel because we don't want to make any changes. The first options are to manage the columns. I can choose the columns I want from my data simply by choosing choose columns. It gives me a list of all the columns and then I can either take the ticks out of the ones I don't want or sometimes it's easier to deselect all the columns and then choose the ones you do want. Title, first name, surname, I would actually take the ID, town, city, salary, email, department and date added is fine. OK. On the applied steps, I've got another action, removed other columns. And in the preview, I now only have nine columns instead of the original 20. I can see the data I'm going to get. In fact, the date added looks like a pretty blank column, so there wouldn't be any point in having that. So let's choose the second option here, remove columns. Click into date added, click remove columns, and remove this column. And then that takes the date added column away, now gone, and I have eight columns in my query editor. There are then other clever options here, keeping rows and removing rows number of options in each of those. If your record set that you're connected to is quite large, you might want to only keep so many of the rows. And that's what we have options for here. Keep top rows allows you to pick the top X. So it might be the top 100, the top 1000, top 10,000, or the bottom rows, or a range of rows, or we can remove rows. So remove top rows, remove bottom rows, remove alternate rows. All of these, you set the number in the dialog box that pops up. Bear in mind, although we've taken these columns out of our query editor and you can potentially remove rows from your query editor, it's not altering at all the source data. That remains untouched. All you're doing here is building a set of instructions that is then saved as a query in Excel for you then to refresh. And it will run the same instructions again. It'll say, well, I only want those columns. I only want those rows, please. We have a remove duplicates option. Again, it will only remove them from the result not from the source data. The source data, if there are any duplicates, will still have those duplicates. The same with errors. We have remove errors option. We have a sort option, A to Z, Z to A. 
that will sort the column that you have selected or you can come into a particular columns drop down and choose sort ascending or descending from there we have a clever split column capability for example here where i've got email i might wish to split that into two columns I select email split column by delimiter what's the delimiter well it's not any of those it's a custom one an at symbol each time i see the delimiter well there's only one at in an email address and then the advanced options which are actually quite limited how many columns do you want to split into well just the two in csv style and we then see the email gets split into email one and email two which is the prefix and then the post office so tony at currentbun.com over on the right here we can see the steps are now increasing because i've done something else we then have a number of other options here group by which we will explore separately the ability to replace values in your data again not in the source data only in the results that you're pulling through into excel there's a number of steps we can carry out on the data before you load it into excel all of those steps have been on the home ribbon so they're easy to access there are other options on the transform ribbon some of these are the same as are on the home ribbon, like the split column that use first rows headers, for example. Others aren't. There's a new option here for rename. So I've got email one and email two. Well, that's not very helpful, is it? So I'm going to rename email one as postbox and rename email two. Once it's finished renaming the first one, email two, rename as post office. A couple of other options on here we'll be exploring in a future lesson, such as add column as well. We will be exploring that. And then view, which has very little choice here. It's whether you want to see the formula bar. That's this bit here that's doing the work. I can actually remove that if I'm not interested. Or I can visit the advanced editor, which is the same window that we saw on the home ribbon. And you can see now that there's a lot more code in here now that we've actually gone ahead and done some work of removing some of the columns, splitting one of the columns and renaming two of the columns. Once you're happy with your transformations, so you've got the data, you made a number of changes here, you can then close and load the result of your query into Excel, and that will then load into a table ready for you to then carry out whatever you want to carry out, any filtering, any charts, any further mathematical calculations. That was an introduction to the query editor's additional commands and options. That can be done at the start when you pull the data in, or it can be done at any stage by going back into the query and edit, pulling back up the query editor with your data source, and going through any of the additional options, such as splitting, renaming, removing some of the rows, removing some of the columns, etc. Everything you do is kept here as an applied step. Any of those steps can be removed at any stage simply by right click and delete or single select and delete. Be a little bit careful about deleting a step that is before other steps because it might make a difference about the add on, if you see what I mean. So if I take removed columns out and click across there, that will remove it. Hiding those columns really will have no effect on these because they weren't there to have any changes made to them. But I have gone back in the history here and you can see my emails now back together. So at any stage you can go backwards. So it's quite a little experimentation window and you can come back forwards and then my column gets split and my split two columns then get renamed. So the stages that you do here can be done at any stage. It doesn't have to be done when you first attach yourself to the data. It can be done at some future point Perhaps you're doing some work and you think, oh, I could do with that split into the query editor, split the column. Remembering the whole time, this is having no effect on the original source data.